Hey everyone, welcome to this tutorial on how to use the All Grain Brewers worksheet template. Um, this is a simple template created in Google Docs using Google Spreadsheets and it allows you to build your own recipes, track your mash schedule for all the All Grain Brewers out there, uh, your fermentation schedule, and then have in the end a log, a complete log of each of your brews stored in the cloud that you can access from your phone, from your tablet, or your computer. So first things first is we're going to be working with our, reci our master recipe sheet here. And you'll always want to double check that you're working with the latest version. You can check by looking under the About tab in your copy of the master spreadsheet. In this case, we've got revision number six, last updated July 9th, 2013. You'll want to periodically check the master spreadsheet, uh, which is linked to in the comments section. You want to check to make sure that you're working with the latest version so that any bug fixes or new feature additions have, um, that your new master spreadsheet will contain. That. Okay? So, with that said, I'm going to right click on my master copy and I'm going to select make a copy. And then we're going to be doing a saison. This is the season for it. First things first, I'm going to rename my spreadsheet. Now, you notice it's going to take a little bit of time to load in all the data that it's working with. There's a tab that's called Data Link, and it's pulling in a ton of data uh, sourcing from other uh, spreadsheets that I've, uh, another spreadsheet that I've created out in the cloud. All right, so first things first is we're going to rename our spreadsheet, and I like to make my recipe with the beer name first, and then I like to put in the year, the month, and the date so that I can see in the file name itself both the name of the beer and when it was brewed. All right, first things first, there's a couple things that I would like to point out to you first. Um, it's usually good to first open up the data link tab because what happens here is it's pulling in a lot of external information, different ingredients, the malt ingredients, hops, uh, yeast, the BJCP styles, and different mash profiles. So all that's stored in the cloud so that you don't have to have it hosted directly in the spreadsheet itself. All right. Now, after we've done that, there's a, two other tabs I want to show you. One is the Globals tab. This has different universal factors. Most of the, these values are not going to change. You might want to change the evaporation rate if you at a, are at a higher or lower elevation level, but Generally speaking, 10% is an accepted evaporation rate. And then under preferences, we have a few values here. The, these first three values are all about losses. Then we have the water to grain ratio and your system, estimated system efficiency. All right, so we've got, for these losses, we've got broken into three different sections. Fermenters, your fermenter loss, your boil kettle loss, and your mash equipment and evaporation laws. Now the reason why these are set to percentages is that we're using formulas that actual commercial breweries use. They use typically will use uh, percentages to estimate their losses as opposed to uh, strict values like losing you know half a barrel of whatever you know to true. Instead they'll use percentages. So as a guide next to it I've put the estimated gallons that you might lose based upon uh, whatever you're working with. So 13 is a 13% is a pretty good true transfer loss in the fermenter. If you've got a pretty big dry hop bill, you might raise that up to 18%, estimating to lose at about, about a gallon loss to a big hop bill. Uh, you might do the same for your world pedal or whirlpool kettle loss during the boil if you've got a big hot bill. Um, uh, but generally speaking, that's what you can expect. Um, you know, go ahead and play around with these values. Also, I want to point out that 
you only need to edit values that are in green. All the gray values, all these gray fields are auto-calculated. So there's formulas embedded in there that you just prefer that you not mess with. Otherwise, you could end up breaking your spreadsheet. Okay? All right, so we've got our, our preferences established. Also, if you want to thicken your mash, lower this number, you can lower it down to like 2.75, probably 2.5, but at 2.5, you're, you're pretty much at thick oatmeal. <laughs> or you can raise it up to 3, 3.5, three maybe 4. Um, and also, for your estimated efficiency, um, put that value there. Mine averages around 90%, sometimes a little lower, sometimes higher. All right. Now, after we've set our preferences, we can build our recipe. So I'm going to go ahead and type in my recipe name and the date that I'm brewing this. Oops. Now. The style, I'm gonna, this is pulling it from the BJCP style guide. Remember, if if this, if these styles don't load in and all you see is a loading um, message, just flip over the data link tab and maybe it just needs a little help to loading in all the data. And once all that's loaded in, then you should get your um, style guide here. So I can start typing and say zone and there it is, 16C. And it'll populate all these values in from the BJCP style guide. We've got our boil length here. I'm set to 60 minutes as the default. And my desired final volume, I like. I set it to the default of 21 liters, which is about 5.5 gallons. Now, for all my American friends that wonder why on earth an American would use metric values, instead of just regular pounds and gallons and such? The answer is that actually most brewing formulas favor the metric system. So if you actually end up start starting to learn some of the formulas and know them by heart, um, it actually becomes easy to work within the metric system. So. For your convenience, I do have a metric conversion calculator on both the recipe and the mash tabs, along with uh, the non-metric equivalents next to them. All right, so now that we've got our boil length set, desired final volume, we pick our yeast. We're going to pick a Saison yeast. Uh, we're going to go Saison, Belgian Saison 2. I'm just going to put on one package. Right now, that this doesn't do anything, the amount, it's just for your own records. But you have a record of the attenuation percentages, the flocculation level, and the alcohol tolerance. Now, once we start populating the grain bill, you will notice that some of the recipe potentials will start to fill in with uh, information. So we're going to just put pil Belgian Pilsner, and we're going to say 13... Uh, kilograms, uh, not 13, we want 13 pounds, so we're going to put in about, say, 6 kilograms, and then we're going to put in some Munich malt, we're going to put in maybe about a pound, so about 0.45 kilograms, and this will give us our grist percentages, along with potential gravity units from uh, our grain bill. As you can see, this will also populate our estimated estimated pre-boil gravity, estimated original gravity, the high and low gravity, uh, final gravity potentials, ABV, alcohol by weight, color, and eventually we'll get to the IBUs in just a minute. Okay, so that's all there is to adding to the grain bill. Right now, the grain bill is kind of general stuff. We don't have it's not complete, but we're still adding items as we find them. And then down to the hop section, we've got two sections: one for boil hops and one for dry hops. 
So for our boil hops, we're going to put Howler Tower, let's say 60 minutes, and we're going to say, uh, we're going to say 50. 50 grams, which is about one and three quarter ounces. That puts us at about 21.6 IBUs, which is within style. And then that should populate this information up here. Our, oh, our bittering ratio is 0.33. Some styles are intended to be that low. And now the sec the reason why we have the boil hops and the dry hops separated is the boil hops we're really concerned about a number of things. Boil usage, like when it's being added, the alpha acid percentages, and the amount that we're going to use, and then that will help give us the IBUs. With dry hops, we're really not concerned about IBUs at all. We're only concerned about records, like the days that we entered them, how much we entered them, and in what form. Okay, so that is the recipe schedule, or the recipe tab. Really, relatively easy to use. The only thing you're filling in is basic style information, the yeast, amounts, grain bill, but at the same time you're getting a lot of information um, that can help you out along the way. Remember that you're only filling in the green fields. You want to leave the gray fields alone because those have formulas in them. Okay. All right. I forgot to change that to pellet. All right. Let's move on to the mash tab, which is our brew day. You'll notice that we've got all of our uh, water values already calculated, how much water we're going to need for the mash and how much water we're going to need for the sparge. You'll notice that a number of other values are populated here, like we can see the volume that we can expect to go to the fermenter, what the knockout volume is going to be like before wort shrinkage and all that, um, what we can expect to lose in evaporation, starting kettle volume, the amount absorbed by grain and mash uh, equipment and evaporation losses. And so this will be the total water that we'll be using. So if you heat all your water at once, that's how much water you're going to need. 10.5 or 10.7 gallons or 40.5 liters. All right. Below that, we've got our mash profile. By no means this is this complete. We're still adding a bunch of different mash schedules but it will eventually will populate all of you know populate temperatures and how long to rest at those temperature ranges and next to that a small table for entering in the actual values and the reason why this is here is really just to give you a guide or a reference as to a record of how much time and what the temperature was this doesn't actually calculate anything, it's just actually intended to give you a record of what your brew day was like and, and what, you, what your actual values were. So let's say, let's say your mash out took forever, you can put that here, and then if something is not right about your beer, you can say, well, let's see, here are all my values. Here's what my mash schedule was like and my pH at that point, 5.5 or whatever. All right, and after you've got your mash information filled in, it's time to collect. Right below that is your pre-boil gravity. So we'll say we've got a, uh, we'll go 11, which uh, we'll go 13. So my pre-boil gravity is 13 bricks, which I'll, well, you can see it in Play-Doh, as well as a specific gravity. And if we go back to our recipe tab, we can double check, all right, what was our estimated potential uh, pre-boil gravity? It's 1059, so if we go back to our mash, we were pretty close, we were just under. All right. We'll also collect our volume, so let's say we collected 30 liters, which is just shy of 8 gallons. Our mash efficiency then was 83.1%.
Obviously, if we had a better brew day and we collected 15 bricks, you know, then our mass efficiency goes up. But we'll just say 13 for now. And that's all it is for the mesh schedule. Really, it's just designed to be really simple and not a big hassle. We're just recording a few pieces of information. And from here on, between this and your boil, you might use your re the recipe tab to reference when you're going to be adding all your boil hops. Um, but as far as timer goes, this is where you would use your own timer or whatever you prefer to keep track of when your mash schedules are up or when your uh, boil timers are up. All right, after the boil is complete, we'll use the fermentation tab to track our fermentation schedule. So let's say our opening bricks reading was, let's say, 16 bricks, which is 1068 for starting gravity. If we go back to a recipe, Potentials, uh, 1065 was original gravity. All right, let's bump that down. We'll say that we were at 10, 15 bricks for our opening specific gravity. Um, temperature here is just for your reference, so you can put whatever you want. It can be in Celsius, it can be in Fahrenheit. I, I really don't care. Um, so we'll say 68C. I'll fix that color. Um, and then as your fermentation goes, you can track um, its progress along the way. You can say we're going to ramp up our temperature, and the next day it went down to 10, and then the next day we ramped up to 73, and then finally it dropped out at 7 bricks with a specific gravity of 10.08. Maybe it settled out there, and we're at 76 degrees temperature. So we'll put in our final gravity here of 1008. That gives us an AV of 7.35, AV alcohol by weight of 5.98, 223 calories. And that's really all there is to this. It's really simple to use. Obviously, your fermentation schedule is not going to go that quickly necessarily. But you get the idea of, of how this works. Um, you can track your recipe development here. Also use this recipe tab for a uh, reference of your hop additions during the boil. You've got a mash tab here to track uh, your mash temperatures and times along with measurements of your pre boil and uh, gravity and volume levels and then your fermentation record. With this spreadsheet you have everything that you need to know to to track the history of your beer, to see what went right and what went wrong with your brew day. Um, you have all the numbers and all the, most of the fields necessary to help um, make it, uh, keep better track of your beers. And because this is a spreadsheet, you have the luxury of putting notes in wherever you want. So. Let's say you want to put in some notes about your mash. You can, you know, mash. You know, I can say I had a stuck mash, had to recirculate. You know, whatever you can put in your notes wherever you want within the white areas or the off-white areas, and keep track of that. All right, but that's basically it. If you have any questions, go ahead and please post them in the YouTube comments. Or you can look me up on the Brew Nerds community. My name is Michael Tangen. And you can post them there, and we'll do our best to answer any questions that you've got. I hope that this spreadsheet proves to be useful for you. And if you have any feature requests, or you notice any bugs, or formulas might be off, uh, please call them to my attention and drop me a line in the comments. Thank you, and hope it works out great for you.